Hello, I'm currently a, a senior in high school. This coming fall, I'll be attending college as a biology major. I'm here today to oppose the inclusion of any strengths and weaknesses clause that would undermine the teaching of the theory of evolution. Many of the people here today believe that a strengths and weaknesses clause would improve our teaching of science and challenge students to think. These people also believe that this proposed clause would strengthen a student's knowledge of science. However, including a clause that undermines one of, the, one of biology's strongest theories does not help students succeed, but weakens their understanding of science and sets students up for failure. Undermining the main theory for the teaching of biology is like trying to teach physics without the laws of conservation of energy and mass. If those are not accepted as true, even though they have substantial evidence to back them, then physics does not work. The same thing applies to biology. If the main theory that is a basis for most other theories is no longer viable, then nothing is viable. We no longer have the ability to teach. In a survey in 2005, citizens of 34 countries were asked if they accepted evolution as a viable theory. Of those 34 countries, the United States had the second lowest number of people who accepted evolution as a viable theory. According to the PISA, which me measures the performance of numerous countries in the field of science, the United States scored consistently in the bottom half of participants. In all categories students were tested, students in the United States failed to meet the test's average score. The other countries with similar numbers of people who accepted evolution also finished in the bottom half, all failing to reach the average score as well. The countries where more people accepted evolution generally had higher test scores and sorry, lost my place, and finished above the average test score with only a few exceptions. While one cannot say that accepting evolution directly correlates to intelligence and proficiency in the field of science, there seems to be some correlation that is worth noting. An understanding of evolution and accepting it as a scientific theory seems to make a difference to some extent on how well students understand science. It is apparent that students in the United States lack the tools necessary and understanding of basic scientific theories. This may be the reason that European scientists are conducting the most recent scientific studies in Europe with only limited help by scientists from the United States. The inclusion of the strengths and weaknesses clause yeah. only aggravates the situation. Okay. This is because students are not learning how to properly create theories and analyze them accordingly, but they are rejecting something based off of personal belief. This is not science. Science requires one to formulate a conclusion based on the evidence presented and observations made. It does not allow one to draw a conclusion, then find the evidence that fits their conclusion and reject all else. What I'm doing today is the perfect example of drawing a conclusion based off of the data presented. I'm using the evidence that was available to make the conclusion that the strengths and weaknesses clause needs to be eliminated from science in order for science to work and be taught properly. Ms. Miller. Uh, Travis, thank you for coming. Tell me, you're a senior at where? Uh, St. Stephen's Episcopal School. Uh, okay. School. All right. Do you have any idea where you're going to college? Uh, McGill University in Canada. Okay. Are you? Wonderful. Well, I just want to thank you uh, for this very thoughtful and uh, uh, very uh, provocative uh, uh, testimony. And, and thanks for coming and stepping into this arena. At, at your age to do this. So I, I wish you the best of where you're going in your life. And I, I, whatever it is, I bet you it's gonna be successful. Do you wanna expand a little bit on the strength and weaknesses issue? Though you covered it very well, but. Well, science in its nature is supposed to addre address weaknesses. It's supposed to create doubt. You'll never see a scientist say anything is fact. I mean, Einstein himself said, sometimes we love our theories so much we believe they are true. Obviously, evolution is not 100% true, and we can't say it is 100% true. But adding the strengths and weaknesses clause is redundant. Obviously, we're going to test, and obviously, we're going to question. You don't need to tell students to do that. That's the nature of science. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Dunbar. Travis, thank you. Um, when you said obviously they're going to test it in that if you were told that there are classrooms where that's not taking place what would you suggest would help encourage those classrooms to do good science which is to test those theories and to present both sides 
Well, if their classes where that happens, then the teachers are not adequately, adequately prepared to teach. I mean, a science teacher should know that you're supposed to question everything, and if they're not teaching students to question, then they're failing at their job. It's not necessarily that the curriculum needs to change, it's that the, or that the curriculum is failing, it's that the teacher is failing. So you shouldn't make this redundant clause and kind of put doubt and encourage doubt when it's already encouraged. It's already encouraged to question. So, so your viewpoint is this language is not erroneous, it's redundant. So to say strengths and weaknesses specifically, I think, is wrong. Analyze and evaluate is more scientific. And even then, I, again, believe it's redundant. Uh, what, what is redundant? I'm sorry. What are you saying is redundant? Analyze and evaluate or analyze and evaluate strengths and weaknesses? Both, because the definition of science is to question. And what you're saying here in strengths and weaknesses is to present both to allow students to question. Well, that's what science is supposed to do. You don't need to tell a scientist to do that. They know they're supposed to do that. And if they don't, then that's a failure on the person's part, not the system as a whole. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm just trying to follow you. What are you saying is redundant had, then? If she's had her question. I'm um, just trying to clarify because I love it that he's here. And from his perspective in that as a student, he's getting ready to go on. I just want to know what he thinks is redundant. The clause. A and which clause? Could you be more Strengths specific? and weaknesses. Okay, thank you. Answered your question, <laughs> Cynthia. Okay, we'll have uh, one more testimony and then we'll take a 15-minute break. Franklin Mayo, 